See how to automatically patch new workstations and servers in today's patching FAQ. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. And I am really enjoying this patching FAQ series, and I hope you are too. And these are frequently asked questions. So if in my in my mind, I'm glad we're really getting this content out there because I was just talking with Jason, who you get to meet in a second, where every one of these topics is pure gold because people, these are the, the everyday block and tackle of things we do with patching. And one of those is when you build a new laptop for a user or deploy a new server VM, you need to make sure it's fully patched. And so that's what we're going to talk about today on the show is how do I, how fast does that happen with Tanium? What does it take to make that happen is kind of, how do I make sure it targets just the new machines in my environment? So Jason, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. If somebody's not, I, I can't imagine anybody that's not heard your intro yet um, from all the other episodes, but for those who haven't, uh, tell us about yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Losser. I'm a technical account manager with Tanium. I've been here six years, uh, but I've been doing operations work for too many years, uh, using all kinds of tools in the Microsoft space, uh, but even doing Linux patching too. So patching, software deployment, provisioning devices, uh, anything in the operations space is what I've been working on. And now I help uh, Tanium customers do that well with, with the Tanium products. Yeah. And I tell you, uh, as we start this topic, I know I've had this from my own customers, this question multiple times. So that's why it's a frequently asked question. How do I keep those new servers, workstations, VMs? How do I keep them up to date? Because you think about our normal maintenance windows for deploying patches or uh, once a month or so, but these machines are coming online every day of the week. So how do we get these updated, Jason? It's a different type of automation that we're talking about today. Like you mentioned, we, we've talked about zero touch patch automation in other videos. But those deployments have lots of maintenance windows. They have maybe delays built in. They have notifications that where users can postpone. Uh, but in this case, when you have a new device, whether that's a new end user device, a new server, you want to get that machine into production as quickly as possible, which means you want to make sure it's fully patched before you send it out the door. Uh, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. And so what we're going to do is going to walk through that workflow together to see how you can set this up. And it's one of those things where you set it up one time and then you're good. Uh, and then you can work on and focus on something else. So Wait a minute. So I, I just all, have to call that out. Set it and forget it. We we do that a lot here. So so this is, again, one of those things that I don't have to keep updated when new patches come out. You're telling me that I can just set it up so that I can do this once in my environment and it's done forever. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yes. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I've worked in operations. I know what it's like. We're always being pulled in different directions. So if I can set up some good processes and automate as much as I can, that, that frees me up to focus on the other things. Um, and it's just, it's just so helpful to have something like that in place. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is covering an article that's in the Tanium Resource Center. So if you go to help.tanium.com, and search for automating uh, patching of new endpoints. There we go. Automate patching of new endpoints. I'm going to click on that article here. And we're basically going to be walking through this article. It has a number of screenshots and all the steps that we're going to be covering today. So if you just want to skip ahead, you can certainly do that, or you can watch us walk through this process. So the first thing we're going to need is a couple of components we're going to be putting together throughout the Tanium platform. We're going to use a, a custom tag. A custom tag is, is a... A text label that you can put on endpoints is completely arbitrary. You can assign it to endpoints and assign what it does. So we're going to use that custom tag. Uh, make sure you pick a unique one. We're going to be using the tag uh, called new build uh, during this uh, uh, automation. And we're going to uh, assign that uh, custom tag to a computer group. So we're going to build a computer group around that custom tag. That custom tag is going to opt it into this workflow. And then we're going to apply a custom scan configuration to ensure that the endpoint is scanned as quickly as possible as soon as it comes online. Then we're going to make sure it has an ongoing patch automation that in installs all the approved patches as quickly as possible and restarts the endpoint to ensure those patches are applied. And then finally, we're going to have a scheduled action that's going to look for those endpoints that have been tagged, that have completed the patch deployment, and then remove that tag so that you can put it into production. So that's the overall workflow. We're going to step through that now. First thing we want to do 
is go to computer groups. So I'm under the computer group section of the platform. I can create a new computer group and I can call this patch new build computers. Again, you can choose your own name and your own tag, but I'm going to say custom tags matches new build. So I'm using the new build tag here, choose your own, but I'm just picking something that I can use to uh, for this workflow. Now we're describing this workflow for Windows during today's uh, video, but you can use the same type of workflow for your Linux endpoints as well. So if you have new Linux endpoints come online, you can build out the same workflow for them. So I create this computer group, and this is what it looks like. I have a patch new build computers based upon that tag. So how do these endpoints get that tag? Well, you can build your endpoints with the tag built in. As you deploy the Tanium client or part of your image, you can put that tag on those endpoints. So if it's an image machine, it already has the tag and the Tanium client built in. If you're building a machine through automation, make sure the Tanium client is installed and that tag is added so that when it first comes online, it checks into Tanium, it has the tag and it's opted into this workflow. And Jason, if I wanted to build that new machine with Tanium, what would I do? We actually have some documentation around that, uh, how to install the Tanium client and then prepare it for imaging. So that's under the help.tanium.com and look for imaging new clients or new mm -hmm. imaging with the Tanium client. Or there's a whole module called provision that'll build those mm. new Windows and Linux endpoints. Yeah, and you Good can thought. put those custom tags right there in the provision module as you're building them using Tanium to build those. Put the tag right in there. And then the patch module will kick in uh, right after they're done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being a provision. Being a provision to me, I should have thought of that answer uh, since you <laughs> threw that softball at me and I just got hit in the face by it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is build a patch deployment, right? And this is a special patch deployment in that we want to do an install. And maybe we'll just call this a new build patch deployment. Again, we're focusing on Windows, but you can do this for Linux as well. The next thing for any patch deployment is to, is to choose which patch list. A patch list is a list of approved patches. It's rule-based. In this case, we would recommend you choose your production patch list. If you have one that you deploy to your production endpoints, choose that. We also have a Tanium patch recommended updates if you'd like to use that as well. So I'm going to choose my production patch list. Then I want to choose my target. Well, since we just built that computer group, we want to choose that computer group. So we want this deployment to deploy the new, uh, the, the, the approved production patches to the new build computers. And this is where we're going to look at the, the options to make sure this deployment is as, ag as aggressive as possible. Because these machines are not in production. They're not in the user's hands yet. We want to make sure it's going to work as quickly as possible. So we're going to specify as an ongoing deployment. That's the automation. It's always, always open. Specify a start time now. That's fine. We do not want to distribute over time. We want this thing to happen right away. Download immediately, override maintenance windows, restart the computer. Now, if you do want to have a notification, just because maybe a technician might be working on it or the server engineer, uh, just make it a short notification. But in this case, we're saying always make it available, uh, always override the maintenance windows and restart the endpoint. And then we go ahead and we create that deployment. And now that deployment is going to be targeting nobody at this point because nobody's in that computer group. But in my environment, I have this built out and I had a couple of machines already staged for this video that have already started to receive this patch deployment. So new endpoints came online, they had the tag, they were opted into this patch deployment and started to install all the patches that are applicable. Which brings me to the the the, the sub-question A of this whole FAQ. Okay, how do I do automatic patching? But the, then the very next question is, okay, I can do that, but how long is it going to take when that tag is applied to an endpoint What's what's my expectation for how soon how soon should that patching start? As a consultant, the answer is always depends, right? Uh -huh. That's what we always say, but yep. it should be rather quickly, right? I would say within a few minutes, you should start to see some status. It does have to download updates depending on how mm -hmm. far out of date that machine is. Typically with your Windows 10, Windows 11 newer operating systems, uh, you just have one cumulative update to install, but those can be rather large. They're over a gigabyte in size. So depending on your bandwidth throttles for your platform, it may take a little bit longer, but you should see within maybe an hour or two, the machine's fully patched. Test and, it out, right? Your mileage may vary. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm guessing simultaneously while patch is doing that, deploy is also laying down bundles for the baseline apps on the machine and forces hitting policy for the first time. So there's a lot of things going on as soon as that machine comes online with the agent. Correct. 
yeah, you, you'll want to measure it so you can set proper expectations because it will differ for where that machine may be if it's on a remote site with, with lesser bandwidth. So definitely want to measure it, but you should see, you know, we typically see the Tanium client, it's effective immediately, right? As soon as you bring the machine online, you can start to ask it questions and then it starts to lay down the tools and starts to download the patches, install the patches, putting the enforcements in place, policies, software packaging, et cetera. Yeah, I know over the last year, one of my customers just started using Provision, and they said that now it's just a few minutes for them to to get a new uh, laptop uh, built, uh, just a few minutes of hands-on. And they said usually within an hour or so, it's ready to go instead of taking all day to sit there and babysit it. Yeah, and definitely from that Provision workflow, we can get a machine you know, from bare bones to fully patched, all the software laid down, all the policy laid out, and hand that machine off to the user so they can be off and up and running. We talked about the deployment. The next thing is we want to we want to set up a special scan configuration. Uh, typically, when you have scan configurations, they have safety measures built in, so you're not all your endpoints on scanning at the exact same time. Maybe they only scan once a day or every few days. In this case, we want to build a, a special configuration for for these specific endpoints so that they scan it as quickly as possible. Right. So we, the machine comes online. It scans for updates. It sees that it needs the latest cumulative update, so it can immediately use that deployment to download and install it. So we're going to focus on Windows here again. We're going to choose the Tanium scan method. We want to scan when new patches are available. We want to frequency. Let's just make this every, we can make it every three hours. Uh, just basically, we want to scan as quickly as possible. I think the article would just say three. That seems to be aggressive enough. But we don't want any random scan delay. Right. We don't want it to add any delays whatsoever. We want this thing to, as soon as they can, start scanning and immediately uh, producing scan results. Also, you want to uh, skip any scan windows, right? Because scan windows limit when a, an endpoint can scan. So we don't want that either. We want this thing to be able to scan whenever. Uh, uh, once we build one that side sidebar question here that just yeah. occurred to me, I hadn't, hadn't thought of this yet, but like, uh, do we have many folks doing VDI or like massive VDI provisioning for virtual desktops or like server, like in mass server deployments, maybe in virtualization infrastructure where they would want to stagger things a little bit? For sure. Right. And that's why this, that is exactly why this checkbox exists for random scan delay. And on a, on a typical production scan, we would definitely recommend this or higher. So this is spreading it out over 120 minutes, about two hours. Uh, if you're if you're deploying a large number of endpoints uh, and you want to use this, you can certainly use a random scan delay, but you're going to be delaying that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times uh, those are built from templates um, and they're already patched to the gold image. Uh, it's better to patch your gold image when deploying that rather than having Tanium come back around and scan and patch it. That's a good point. After we build this scan configuration, we need to assign it to a computer group. Everything in Tanium Patch is a configuration that you enforce or assign to a computer group. So I have built my scan configuration here, and I can scroll down and I can select my targeting group. So again, I can choose my new build patch computers. I've already done this for my for this demo here. But I build the configuration, then I assign it to the new build computers. So those computers that are tagged will automatically get this scan configuration. We're not done yet. One more thing we have to do uh, is prioritize that scan configuration. So each scan configuration, you can have more than one uh, per endpoint, but the scan configuration with the highest priority wins. So what we want to do is click prioritize here and make sure our new build patch scan configuration is at the top. Uh, that way, those that configuration is only enforced, is, is properly enforced on those endpoints. And that's not going to be covered by your general scan configuration. So that's that prioritize button there. That's a, again, it's a one-time setup. We do all this and you're done. Uh, so if we built a, a tag, a computer group, a deployment, a scan configuration. And then of course, what we need to do is we've got machines that are being built. They have the tag and we need to remove that tag when they're ready to go into production. We don't want to have them always patching and restarting without any notification forever, especially if it's in production. So what we want to do is set up a scheduled action that removes that tag. And I'm going to use the interact. So I'm in the, the module interact, and I'm asking for all the custom tags from the environment, and I'm selecting the new build tag, and I'm clicking deploy action. We want to remove this tag. So let's walk through that together. So we want to remove this tag. And then what we want to do is, is name this, so uh, like new build, 
Um, and this is outlined in the article. You want to make sure this is very clear what this scheduled action is. So when you come back later and you look in your scheduled actions, you know exactly what this is for. And then you want to set this to a recurring deployment. And let's say we'll do it maybe every five hours. That should be plenty of time for a machine to fully patch and restart. So every five hours, we'll have this scheduled action go out and look for endpoints that have this tag and then remove that tag. Uh, two more things. Select your action group, right? In this case, default all computers is fine. If you want to choose all windows, that's fine as well. But we're going to add a filter question. And this is where we're going to make sure that, sure that the endpoint not only has the tag that we need to remove, but it has completed that patch deployment. And this, I got to go back to our article and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a, 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 a filter question that we need to add. Now I've outlined it here in the article. We're going to add this filter question. And it's, it's a Tanium query that just says, show me the machines that have this patch deployment ID 126. So you got to look at your patch deployment ID when you create it. And then we're going to do replace this 126 with your patch deployment ID. So I'm going to take this whole query here and I'm going to go back to my browser and I'm going to paste that in here. So what this is saying is get those endpoints that have completed deployment 126, have that tag, and then we're going to remove that. So we got to we got to make sure we edit though that that ID in there, right? The 126. That's, That's not so uh, again, just to recap, can you show folks where to find that ID? Yes, and I missed that earlier, so I apologize for that. But when you let me get back to that tab here, we have a tab. So that when you create your deployment, it gets a unique ID. And that ID here is shown right here at the top of the page. So what you want to do when you create that deployment, which is the third step in this workflow, after you create the deployment, you can go ahead and grab this ID and put in your notes. And then when you, you can go to the article, copy and paste that filter question, and then replace that ID with, with the ID of your new build patch deployment. So in this case, I have two endpoints that have have the tag and have completed that deployment. You may not have any at this time, that's fine. But what we're gonna do is set up this scheduled action so that uh, it will automatically do this going forward. So every five hours, the platform will automatically go out and see if any new build machines have completed their patch deployment and then remove that tag. And then you can put it into production. Yeah, because that that's the trick shot right there. Um... I was thinking, okay, if I'm just going to every five hours go remove the new build tag, what if it just came off the image and it's five minutes old and then we're just ripping off the new build and it didn't get a chance to patch it. So this, this is that, that fills in the missing gap in my mind. So we're actually using a Tanium sensor that we use all the time to, to, to look at the patching status of that deployment to say, is it complete or not? And only after it's complete, will we remove that tag. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. Be sure to uh, take a look at that. You can copy paste, just change out the ID. Uh, and, and you know, we, we walked through this video when, in just a few vid few minutes. And you can go through this article yourself and set up the automation of patching your new endpoints. Just set it, forget it, and free yourself up to do something else. Well, Jason, thank you again. Uh, I, again, I just, I'm amazed. These, these, every one of these FAQ videos we've been doing on patch are just pure gold. I mean, this is stuff that people do every day and we're saving so much time. So thank you for walking us through again, community article in the uh, show notes below Tanium resource center, help.tanium.com. You can go out there, find this article and it's a walkthrough just uh, promoting here. Uh, Tanium certified. Yes, there's swag out there for you. If you show up at Converge and you're certified, you can get something. So uh, you can take your exams at Converge uh, every, in November every year for a discount. If you've not done your Tanium certified operator, Tanium certified administrator, and we have an endpoint management now certification that I believe includes some patchwork in there. So uh, patch and deploy. So that stuff is out there in this channel. You can uh, search for Tanium certification and uh, in this Tanium Tech Talks playlist where you found this video, you'll find some other videos to talk about certification as well. So why not do that with all the free time that you save and automating your office and, and new build patching and all that other stuff? Uh, use that time to go get team certified. So uh, this has been a lot of fun. Stay tuned. There's more patching FAQs coming up in this series. So until next time, go Tanium. <laughs>